Honorable Governor, Honorable Minister for IT and Industries, Mr. Jayesh Ranjan, Special CS Industries, Dr. Jitendra Sharma, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a very proud moment for us. And if I may say, it's also a very nostalgic moment. 20 years ago, when we started BioAsia in a forum like this, February 2004, I happened to be the Secretary of Industries then. We didn't realize that it was going to grow so big. Let me jog my memory with your permission, ma'am. Over this last eventful 20 years, how the event has grown, how this conference has grown, and along with the Genome Valley, also has grown by leaps and bounds. In fact, the idea of having a conference like this was to showcase Genome Valley as the biotech hub of India. It had just begun in 2001, and we thought we should have an event to showcase as, a, uh, as an ecosystem which should attract industries from all over the world, if not India. It's a difficult task to begin with, but Hyderabad presented a very unique combination of uh, the, the partnership. We have all heard of the PPP, the public-private partnership, but here it was a very different kind of a partnership between academia, industry and the government helping it. We had an advisory committee which was headed by the retired director of CCMB. The academia came in support to us and they told us these are the things you should do in the government. The industry also was fully involved. That's how this ecosystem succeeded and others did not. Many other cities, many other states tried but they haven't been as successful as Genome Valley has been. Many other events were started but they didn't sustain like BioAsia has done. So I would like to take this opportunity to compliment the team which carried on the efforts in the last 20 years. When we started it and I was involved in some ways till about last 10 years, after that it was Shakti and his team which carried it forward and it has truly become the magnet for attracting talent from all over the world. The What made it happen in a way goes to its predictability. Every year in the month of February, this event people look forward to. Initially, we started it in the first or second week of February. Soon we realized that it's going to clash with the Chinese New Year. So you won't have the delegates coming from Singapore, China, Korea. This again being called BioAsia has a story to it. We wanted this to be a platform to showcase what is happening in the Asian countries, the Pacific countries. Till then, we had the Bio, the event, the annual event which happens in the US, which was showcasing the achievements in USA and Europe, as if nothing was happening in Asia, which is a fact in a way that nothing much significant was happening in Asia then, but we wanted to have a platform to, uh, to have networking among the Asian countries to showcase this. That is how this name BioAsia was coined and uh, the it, it event has grown over the years. We also made it a point to recognize world-class talent by conferring the Genome Valley Excellence Award. Many Nobel laureates were given. Some people who got the award got the Nobel Prize after that. Martin Evans is a case in point, the stem cell researcher who was given the award and next year he got the uh, Nobel Prize. So the predictability, the quality which what mattered and kept, kept sustaining this event. So I wish that this event grows along with Genome Valley. Genome Valley by itself is an interesting ecosystem which was not easy to build. It has taken years, in, in, unlike the other IT clusters where you build a building and uh, it grows on its own. It is not like that. We have friends from the pharma and the life sciences industry where they need every element of that cluster has to be very carefully planned, meticulously planned. That's how it has been a kind of a labor of love for me over the last 20 years to be involved in Genome Valley. And it is today what it is. No very few cities in India and perhaps in the world can boast of an ecosystem as vibrant as Genome Valley. I'm happy that the government is planning to expand it. Time has come to grow to other sectors of biotech industry like Ag Biotech. Dr. Sharma is here. 
I was requesting him to have the Ag Biotech Foundry, Bio Foundry, which is uh, sanctioned by Government of India. He must help us to have it in Genome Valley, in the new phase three of Genome Valley, uh, which will be the point for upscaling technology of the Ag Biotech company. There are so many seed companies, so many biopesticide companies which can be helped with that. There's animal biotechnology, which is a new area. We have the National Institute of Animal Biotechnology. So this is the new frontiers of technology, apart from biopharma and life sciences and healthcare, where the biotechnology can grow. There is a fund created by the government of India, R&D fund, with an outlay of over 10,000 crores. I hope the biotechnology gets its share, and part of that money we can have R&D uh, clusters in, uh, in the genome valley also. In fact, it was the first ever R&D center in India, the R&D in Knowledge Park, which was built in the Genome Valley, was the first one. So, keeping that in mind, I would request Dr. Sharma to help us in building these kind of clusters. Once again, take this opportunity for complementing it. The Federation of Asian Biotech Associations, FABA as it was called, was the original uh, organizer which was thought of uh, hosting this event. They played this part by ensuring that chapters of FABA, they were present and it continued over the years. They were also helping the biotechnology, the, the bio-Asia to grow. Thank you very much and, uh, and all the very best for the next 20 years with Sakti and his team and the entire biotechnology, bio-Asia team. Thank you for the opportunity.